Welcome to section four of our course, where we're going to focus on modeling. Over the next three lessons, we're going to overview all of the modeling functionality in Model at a very high level. We're going to learn how to build a CHADE model and discuss the CHADE algorithm. And then finally, we're going to discuss model assessment. In this video, we're going to go ahead and visit all of the different modeling functionality, making a brief stop at each of the major categories of modeling algorithms supported. Specifically, we're going to start with the classification modeling nodes, but specifically for categorical targets. Then we're going to move on to the segmentation nodes, followed by association. Then we're going to revisit classification, but for numeric targets, including brief mention of the autonumeric node. Then finally, we're going to wrap up by addressing some of the nodes that are in the modeling functionality that don't quite as neatly fall into one bucket or another. Let's begin with the classification algorithms. These are probably the algorithms that you're most familiar with. And if you look at the lower left-hand corner of the modeler interface, you can see that the modeling palette is divided into several categories. We're going to be discussing these one after the other, but beginning again with classification. However, I don't have all the classification algorithms displayed on the screen right now. I'm going to focus at the center of our screen on those classification algorithms that predict a categorical target. Don't worry, I'll put the rest of them in context as well, but that's where we're going to begin. And the classification tab of the modeling palette and those algorithms that are used to predict a categorical target variable. So in the top row, what you can see is Chade, Quest, C5O, Cart, and Decision List. Now, some of them say no targets beneath. That's simply because we're not hooked up to data. But that's what those symbols represent. So the first four of those, Chade, Quest, C5O, and CART, are all decision trees. They predict a categorical target, and they develop a tree-like graphic. And we're going to be able to get to see those demonstrated in the next video. Decision list is a little different. It also produces rules. Generally speaking, all five of them can be called rule induction techniques, but it does not produce that tree graphic. In the center, you see discriminant analysis and logistic regression. If you've taken intermediate to advanced level statistics classes, in particular a multivariate statistics class, you may have encountered discriminant or logistic regression. They're fairly common once you get past that first statistics class. And then in the bottom row, you can see random trees, neural net, support vector machine, and k-nearest neighbors. Those are our machine learning classifiers. They use machine learning techniques to identify that categorical target, or rather to predict that categorical target. Now over on the right-hand side, I've got three more. I placed them in that second row because they're statistical in nature, like discriminant logistic, but they're a little different. You probably have not encountered these unless you've taken more advanced stats classes. The first one is GenLin, and you may think at first I mean as in general linear model, but this is generalized linear model, so it would not be abbreviated GLM, it would be abbreviated GZLM. So it's a little bit fancier, and we certainly won't be getting into this course, but it gives you some idea of the diversity of algorithms that Modeler supports. The next one is generalized mixed models. Again, unless you've gotten to the point where you've taken some of those advanced stats classes, you may not have encountered generalized mixed models, but it's here in Modeler. It's supported. Finally, there is a technique called Cox regression. Now, I've separated these a bit because they are not your typical classifiers, nor is Cox regression. It's actually a little different. Cox regression is also something you might encounter in a multivariate stats course, but you may have encountered it as Kaplan-Meier, or so-called survival analysis. Folks use this kind of thing to figure out when a machine will fail or when an airplane engine has to be replaced. So you can tell it's a bit different than a classifier, but Modeler does place it in the classifier tab. So Cox regression is closely related to survival analysis. It just lets you throw in some input variables. So a lot of complexity there. So how do you navigate all of this? Well, 
I'm going to be showing you a trick in just a few minutes to remember what your classifiers are. But before we do that, I want to continue to give you the lay of the land. So the next tab that we're going to talk about is the segmentation nodes. And again, you can see on the bottom left hand corner that if you click on the segmentation tab, then the modeling palette will only show you these five. So there are k-means, probably the most famous of the five here, Gahonan networks, two-step, and anomaly detection. Now let me briefly mention what the AS means. Two-step AS. That means analytic server. So you may see this on your copy of Modeler, but unless you're using Modeler installed on a client machine, like a laptop for instance, but then you're also hooked up to a server and you also have a server copy of Modeler, you're not going to be able to use these nodes. So if you have access to Analytics Server, you probably know who you are. Now I know this all sounds a bit complex, but I'm showing you this because you're going to see all these nodes and you're going to wonder what they're for. When we get to the next video and we do the demonstration, what we'll be showing you are the most important ones for you to learn first to get acclimated. Okay, so what do k-means, Cajonan, and two-step have in common? Well, these are your clustering techniques. Sometimes you'll hear the phrase unsupervised. You know, I think a lot of folks get confused when they hear that. A lot of machine learning folks have now been calling it labeled data or unlabeled data. This is that unlabeled data. It's when you're exploring and looking for patterns, but you do not have a target variable. It's really as simple as that, folks. When you're working in Modeler, you know you've got that all-important type node, and you would normally declare your target variable in the type node. Here, these are techniques that don't require a target variable declared in the type node. They're more exploratory in nature. It's a whole topic of its own. The one, again, that you've probably encountered in your reading or exploring this topic is k-means. It's the most famous of the ones shown here. Anomaly detection is what you might guess it is. It's trying to find those outliers. It's trying to find those unusual cases. Maybe you're trying to clean the data, but you might also be doing something like fraud detection, and you're wondering, why is this particular instance so different than the others? So that's a very brief overview of the segmentation nodes. They are again for cluster analysis or related techniques. The next one, association nodes, also gets its own tab. So if you go down here to the bottom left and click on association, you can see only these. You're probably familiar with these as a consumer, as a customer of organizations like Amazon, or Netflix, let's say, uh, or pretty much any retail environment these days that is online, if you purchase one item, it will say other items that you might also be interested in. Those have techniques like association rules working behind the scenes. And a priori and karma are two different methods at getting at that, as well as the final one, which is simply called the association rules node. Finally, the sequence node, a little different. That's not merely saying that when A happens, B also happens. It's trying to get at the sequence of those events. A, B, and C have happened, then we think that D is also likely. Again, very high level, trying to acclimate you. Hopefully this is making you just a little bit more comfortable with the diversity of what modeler can do and good advice is to stay focused. Don't spend 10 minutes on each of these. That's not how you want to learn this. You want to focus on a couple, get comfortable with them, and then over time learn the others. And that's why we've chosen just two to show you in the next video. Next, a bit different, a bit change of pace. These are the so-called auto nodes. They don't get their own tab, but if you go down here to the lower left and click on all, they're always at the beginning of that tab. So what do these do? And this leads us back to that trick. How can you remember which is which? I'll show you that trick in just a moment. So what the auto classifier does is allows you to run all of the classifiers in one step. Just a few mouse clicks and you're running 
more than a dozen algorithms. So let's take a look inside. If we double click on this and we go to the Expert tab, look at that. You can see all of the ones that I showed you on that very first tab, that first screen that we looked at. Notice, however, that where we have logistic regression up here is the second one we don't have linear regression because again this node would be for those categorical target variables let's take a look at the auto node for numeric the so-called auto numeric node when we take a look at this one and click on the expert tab we see an overlapping list but it's a little different we see regression, we see the linear node, the regression and the linear node both do linear regression but in different ways, and we see chain and cart, which we saw a moment ago, but we don't see them all. We see a somewhat shorter list because auto numeric is only those algorithms that are capable of predicting a numeric or continuous target variable. So, whether you're using these models individually or through the auto node, then this will help you keep track of which ones are capable of a numeric prediction and which ones are capable of a categorical prediction because they're all mixed together in the classification tab. Again, I know there's a whole bunch of these. My advice is to focus. So, for instance, I would prefer that you get comfortable with at least one of these before you consider letting the auto classifier run all of them for you. You want to develop that competency in at least one to understand what it's doing under the hood before you just automatically generate all of these models. Take your time, there's a lot to learn. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to get to a list that is a bit different than all the others. Only one of these has popped up before and that's the uh, random trees, okay? So starting from left to right, what's going on here? Well, time series is time series forecasting. So a classic example of that is, let's say you want to predict tomorrow's IBM stock price. Well, you'd have all the prices on previous business days, and you want to use that information to predict tomorrow. That's a classic example of time series forecasting. I took a moment to give you that example because a lot of folks confuse predictive analytics with time series forecasting, they're actually quite different, but Modeler can do it, and it does it in a way that's similar to the auto nodes. It actually runs lots of different time series models behind the scenes and then lets you do that. We're mentioning it now, but I will not be demonstrating the time series node in the course. The next two I'm going to mention only very briefly. They're among the newer additions to Modeler. So, for instance, if you have an older copy of Modeler, it's possible that you don't can't find these nodes because they are the most recent of all the ones that we're looking at in this video. And they do geospatial analysis. So it can be used for all kinds of things, but it can be used to try to figure out this combination of geology and time. For instance, criminals will tend to break into warehouses under the darkness of night, but suburban homes tend to experience break-ins in the middle of the day when everybody is gone. Okay, that's the kind of thing that you might figure out with uh, geospatial. Next one is principal components and factor analysis. And this isn't a model in the same sense that we've been talking about modeling in the rest of the video. But if you're familiar with factor analysis, Modeler supports that. And further, drawing upon the familiarity of factor analysis that you might have, you can look at redundancy among your variables and by doing so perhaps reduce the number of inputs that you feed to other models and it can be very useful having factor analysis right inside model or like that. The feature selection node does the same. It's not like factor analysis, that's for sure, but it can often be used for a similar purpose in that you might use factor analysis and modeler because you have too many similar inputs and you might use feature selection also because you have a lot of inputs. It helps you choose the best ones. Always best to stick with what you're comfortable with and what you're competent with. So although these can be very useful nodes, take the time to learn a little bit about what they're doing behind the scenes. Be a little bit careful about simply just dragging them into place and running them on default because they're powerful. Uh, they're amazing if you know what they're doing, but they can be a little risky if you don't know what they're doing including feature selection, which seems so easy, but there's some subtleties behind what it's doing behind the scenes. Finally, we revisit random trees. 
So what's going on with random trees is you might be able to guess you build a single tree now you've got a whole bunch of trees so tree singular now tree plural so this allows you to build a whole bunch of trees and then you average across the trees so you lose that wonderful tree diagram but you frequently get greater accuracy.